Hello class, uh, today we're going to start our new unit finally, uh, after doing vocab yesterday, we'll take a vocab quiz over that stuff on Friday, so if you didn't do your vocab, do it now, make sure you get it done, turn it in, get the grade, okay? Uh, here our warm up says to name the reflected image, a little review, uh, in line of RS, in line L, so reflection means it has to be flipped across the line, and that means from RS across L is the line VU. You can see the arrow, horribly drawn arrow I drew there. We do that differently here. There's our new line VU, which means that our answer is A. So some vocab words for today. This is not all of them. There are some more. Yeah, circle, arc, minor arc, major arc, semicircles, congruent arcs, adjacent arcs, center, concentric circles, circumference, pi, inscribed, circumscribed, radius, radian measure, central angle, you have three more, arc length, chord, and diameter. Some of those you probably already know what they are. If you don't know what some of these words mean, you should have done your vocab. And you'll be able to look at those once I get them back to you. Um, should be tomorrow. Hopefully by Thursday I'll get them back to you. All right, so let's look at some what these words do here. So here's some examples. Um, you already did vocab, so I'm not making you write this right now. But if you need to, here's three vocab words right now. Uh, a radius, or the radi radii is the plural of radius, is a segment with endpoints at the center and on the circle. So here you can see some examples here are CF, CE, and CD, or you can change the names around for some of them to FC, EC, and DC. Either way, all works, but you kind of want to start from the middle and work your way out. A chord is a segment with endpoints on the circle. A, B, and D, E are examples of chords. And DE is actually a special chord, which is the diameter. A diameter of a circle is a chord that passes through the center and is made up of non of collinear radii. So two radiuses or two radii that are connect together to form a line across the circle going through the middle. So DE is our diameter example here. We could have several other ones if we wanted to, but those are the points we have. So here we have a circle, we need to identify a radius, and we need to name the circle. So in naming a circle, what you use is the center point, and here the center point is E. So we draw a circle, we draw a circle, put a little dot in the middle, and our circle name is E. There's our first answer. Second answer is to identify radius, we have a couple options here, we could do BE, we can do DE, or we can switch those around and do EB and ED. All four of those are different radii. Well, all four of those are naming two different radii that are listed here. All right. AC is this other line here. It's just a chord. It's not anything special. So here, now we're looking to name some chords. So we want to name a chord and a diameter of this circle, circle Q. So the only chord that is not a diameter is WZ down, down at the bottom. So WZ or ZW is our chord. In the diameter, we have a couple different options here as well, WY or XZ, and again, we can rearrange the naming on that, so WY or YW, and then we have XZ or ZX. Those all four are names for two of the, the only two diameters we have given here. Here we have the relationships between diameter and radius, so if a circle has a radius R and a diameter D, then the following relationships are true. No matter, no matter if the radius is making up part of that diameter or not, the diameter is equal to ha 
half of the radius, so d over 2, or 1 half times d, same thing. And the diameter, same thing, just solved for d, basically. Uh, d is equal to 2 times r, or 2 times the radius. Figured those things were kind of common sense things that you guys already know, so I'm not making you write those down. So here we have... All right, so here we want to actually <coughs> calculate what the uh, length of QV is, which is a radius. You look in there and see that Q is on the side, V is in the middle, so we're looking for a radius. RT, both R and T are on opposite sides of the circle, which means that is a diameter. So we're going to use our formula for radius and divide our diameter by 2. So we know that... Our, radi our diameter, sorry, D, is 21 centimeters. So our R is going to be D over 2. So 21 over 2, which comes out to be 10.5 centimeters. Okay, so our next problem, we have circle pairs, so these are different facts about circles, basically. So, two circles are congruent if and only if they have congruent radii. All circles are similar, so no matter what, it doesn't matter how big or how small the circle is, they are going to be similar. And concentric circles are coplanar circles that have the same center, so there's another vocab word if you didn't get your vocab done. Um... So here you can see two circles, one inside the other, both with the same center. Circle A with radius AB, and then circle A with radius AC are concentric. That's how you say that word. So our next problem here, we have these two circles that are kind of overlapping each other here. But we know the diameter of the larger circle X is 22 units. The diameter of the smaller circle Y is 16 units. And we know the space in between the two sides, WZ, is 5 units. So we need to find the length of XY. So really all we're doing here is we're going to add our two radii together. And then we're going to subtract out that WZ because really the radii would be overlapping on, on that line. So we don't need to include it two times. <clears throat> so 22 plus 16, that's our two radii added together. It's just 38. And then we're going to subtract 5 away from that to get rid of the extra <coughs> WZ. So our final answer here is going to be 33 units. Okay. Moving on. Got a lot to get through, trying to make sure we got time to get through it all. So here's circumference. Hopefully you already know at least one of these formulas, 2 pi r for when you're given a radius. If you're given a diameter, it's just pi times the diameter, because 2r inside of the second equation, 2 times r is the diameter, so diameter times pi gets you your circumference as well. Not usually the one you're using, but if you're given a diameter, then you can use that. So here we have crop circles. A series of crop circles was discovered in Alberta, Canada on September 4th, 1999. The largest of the three circles in a radius of, uh, had a radius of 30 feet. We need to find its circumference. So we know, again, from the formula that circumference is equal to 2 times pi r. So our circumference is 2 times pi, and our radius is 30. It doesn't say it around anything specific here. So 2 times 30 is 60 pi. That's 60 times pi was out to be, if you round it to the nearest hundredth, or nearest tenth, 188.5 feet. <clears throat> and that's our answer. 
Next example. You need to find the diameter now and the radius of a circle to the nearest hundredth if the circumference of the circle is 65.4 feet. So now we're going to work backwards. Given our circumference, we need to find the radius and then from the radius double it and get our uh, diameter. So our circumference is equal to 65.4 feet. Our circumference should be 2 times pi times radius. So 65.4 is equal to 2 pi r. We divide both sides by 2 pi. And we get our radius, which comes out to be, when you round to the nearest hundredth, like it says to, it's 10.41 feet. Then we double that and get our radius, or our diameter, sorry, and that comes out to be 20.82 feet. And there's our answers. <clears throat> okay, example number six. Now we're getting into uh, our second section here. This one's all about Cir uh, things that are circumscribed. So that means that things that are inside of a circle and their points touch the edges. So here we have a triangle that's inside and because we know that angle in the middle is a right angle and we know that the two sides touch the outside, that means that they are equal because they are both radii for this circle. So these are congruent and this is congruent to it as well, it doesn't really matter, but it, uh, it is congruent. That means we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Those triangles never go away. So, because we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, we take our hypotenuse of that triangle and divide it by square root 2, we can get our sides. Conveniently, our hypotenuse is 3 square root 2. So, our leg, or our radius for the circle, is equal to the hypotenuse over square root 2. So 3 square root 2 over square root 2. Those are going to cancel, and our radius is 3. So now we can use our radius to find the circumference. 2 pi r. So 2 times 3 and times pi. 2 times 3 is 6, so we got 6 pi here, which comes out to be 18.85, and we do not have any units, so that is our answer. So we found our radius using the special right triangle, and then used our radius to find our circumference. Sum of central angles. So this is something we probably should have known before the last unit, but you know what? The district tells us which order to go in, and that's the order we're going in. So here's something we probably should have known already, and we kind of do know because of the last unit, that all central angles sum to be 360. So I think we learned that in one of the last uh, notes from the last unit. That all the angles inside, no matter what, even this is just talking about circles, but doesn't matter, the interior angles from the central, sorry, the sum of the central angles are, will always equal 360. So, we need to find the value of x for this one. Now this one's a bit tricky, because there is that extra little 20x given to us, but that, like I said, is extra. We know that rv, there is a diameter, and because that is a diameter, it cuts the circle in half. We have everything on the right side of that line. We don't have that one angle on the left side. So we can't use that to add in to get our three set equal to 360. So instead, since we have half of the triangle's angles, triangle, sorry, half of the circle's angles, we're going to use 360 divided by 2, which is 180. So first we need to combine all these together and combine like terms. So I'm going to do it horizontally, or vertically, sorry. So... 8x minus 4 plus 13x minus 3 
plus 5x plus 5. So we're going to add these together. So negative 4 plus negative 3 is negative 7, and negative 7 plus a positive 5 is going to be negative 2. 8x plus 13x is going to be 21x, and 21x plus 5x is 26x. That needs to be equal to 180. So now we can solve for x. We're going to add 2 to both sides. So we have that 26x is equal to 182. And we divide by 26 on both sides. And our x comes out to be 7. And that's all we needed to find. Now if we want to, we can plug that back in for the 20x. So 20 times 7 comes out to be 140. So that's what angle QTV is. And that leaves that QTR is going to be 40 degrees if we really wanted to find it. We don't have to, just want us to find x, but just some cool things we could find with that. All right, so arcs and arc measure. So we have a, a minor arc is the shortest arc connecting two endpoints on a circle. The measure of a minor arc is less than 180 and equal to the measure of its related central angle. A major arc is the longest arc connecting two endpoints on a circle. The me measure of a major arc is greater than 180 and equal to 360 minus the measure of the minor arc with the same endpoints. A semicircle is an arc with endpoints that lie on a diameter. So the measure of a semicircle is 180. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump into our first problem with this. We have... We just need to know what the major arc here is, or sorry, we need to know whether it is a major arc, a minor arc, or a semicircle, and find its measure. So WC is a radius of circle C, tells us that, and we can see that XY is going fully across the circle. We need to identify arc XZY as one of these. So XZY, you can see... So x, we start here, and we start with x, we go around the circle to y. So x, z, y is that red portion there, which is a uh, major arc. At the, well, it's not a major arc, actually, because it appears to be a semicircle. Which means this measure is 180. The measure of x, z, y. And there we go. Pretty simple. Next one, a little bit. <clears throat> now, I don't want you to write this down. You don't have to. The same circle or in congruent circles, two, or in the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs, are congruent if and only if their central angles are congruent. So here we have a pie chart. We want to, or a circle graph, whichever we, whatever you want to call it. We want to find the measure of K, arc KL, which is the comfort portion of this bicycle type pie chart. So it's 21% of the circle, we know that. So what we're going to do, we know a circle is 360 degrees. If we multiply that by 21%, or 0.21, we'll figure out what the angle is here. And that comes out to be 75.6 degrees. So our arc is just 75.6. That's it. Super simple. Next one, next little postulate. The measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of the two arcs. Should be pretty common knowledge on that one. 
Here we need to find the measure of arc LHI. So that is going to be So the arc we're looking to find is this guy right here. And based on the fact that that's 32 degree angle and it makes up or it uses that the same line as IM and LM, which are next to that other 90 degree angle, it means our angle here is also 90 degrees. Okay, we got one more example to do, guys. This one is uh, going to be a bit more complicated because we have to use this formula for arc length. So now we're actually figuring out how long the arcs are, as in like part of the circumference. So just like we did before last unit with the area of a sector compared to the area of a whole circle, this is going to be the a portion of the circumference. So what you're going to do is take the angle and divide it by 360, so you get like a proportion that that angle is of the full circle. And then you multiply that by your circumference. And that gives you the portion of the circle circumference that your arc is. So here's our example. We need to find DA, so that little 40 degree angle part portion. And we know our diameter, or not our diameter, sorry, our radius, BC there is 4.5, which means all of our radiuses are 4.5. So, we're going to use that formula, and we're going to make it simple. We're going to simplify it down without, I'm not even going to use a calculator. I didn't use it whenever I wrote my notes for this. I'm not going to use a calculator right now either. So, we know that our angle is 40 degrees. We're going to divide that by 360 and multiply all that by 2 pi times our radius, 4.5. So, first and foremost, the zeros we can get rid of. We got 4 over 36 now. So, 4 over 36 times and 2 times 4.5 is 9. So, 9 pi. 4 out of 36, how many times does 4 go into 36? Or we can simplify that fraction even more and say it's 2 goes into both, right? If we don't notice that 4 goes into 36, <laughs> 2 goes into both. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 36 divided by 2 is 18. And again, 2 goes into both. So we get the 9 pi over here. And that means that our final fraction is 1 ninth times 9 pi. So we got 1 ninth times 9 pi. The 9s are going to cancel. So we're left with 1 times pi, which is just pi. So our answer is pi, which is rounded to the nearest hundredth, as it says. This is what you always know. 3.14 centimeters. And there we go. Our exit ticket is similar to this one, however, the angle is not as easy to simplify down, so you will actually have to use a calculator, all right? And there you go. Now, by the way, this angle used to be in radians, which is a unit you guys have not seen yet, but you're welcome. I changed it. It's now back, back into degrees. I converted it to degrees, so your answer is still going to be the same. And go ahead and finish that up. And we'll catch you next time.